Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's up? Hey, are you bored of TV? Like drugs, but can't afford them? Or still paying alimony? Maybe. All right. Read How to See a Man About a Dog Collected Writing. It's surreal. It's strange. It's How to See a Man About a Dog. Get your dose of surreal prose and poetry with this dark comedy collection. Ebook available on Kindle Unlimited. Print copies are available on Amazon, the Book Depository, and more. That's right. I'm going to go get my ebook on Kindle Unlimited today. How to See a Man About a Dog. It combines darkly comic short stories, powerful poems, and pulp fiction prose to create a heartbreaking and hilarious journey readers will not soon forget. Read How to See a Man About a Dog, Collected Writings, for free with Kindle Unlimited. Ebook available on Kindle, print copies available on Amazon, the book repository, and more. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Guess what? Our favorite sponsor's back. Oh, it's the Puzzle Dude from Unidragon. That's right, Unidragon. Yep, Unidragon.com. They have a brand new item. It's called the Playful Parrot. It's a five-in-one puzzle that comes on out that actually comes all the way up to the brand new size, which is... The royal size. Now they're small, medium, king size, and royal size. So you can get seven times bigger than the standard puzzle. What do you think about the playful parrots? Being a pirate adventurer that you are, Mike, what say you? Oh, the owl's jealous. The owl's jealous? Uh Uh-oh, what's the owl saying about the parrots? Oh, there's five of them and one of him. That's right, that's what happens. You know what? When you're the original, sometimes you get replaced and upgraded. So if you want to get upgraded in your puzzles, now's the time to go to unidragon.com. Again, that's unidragon.com. Don't be fooled by other imitation puzzle makers. Only get your true puzzle from unidragon.com. They're the best and they're the world's leader in wooden puzzles. Tech Time listeners, use promo code DRAGONTECH. Again, that's DRAGONTECH for a 10% discount code. They're no longer three sizes, Mike. Guess how many they are now? They're four sizes. That's right. They're four sizes. Make sure to visit techtimeradio.com forward slash sponsors and click on the order now button to go directly to Unidragon. Our number one sponsor says thank you. And the owl is jealous. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Do you know the average person can sweat 463 pints per year? Oh, that's gross. But I've totally been there, wiping my sweaty palms on my pants before shaking hands. I can remember standing in front of a group of people about to do a large presentation and looking down and seeing those sweaty pits. Man, that is the worst. Did you know that deodorants do nothing for sweat control? It's like putting a scented candle in your pits. And we just don't sweat under the arms. That's right. We don't. We sweat all over. Yeah, that's what's cool about Carpe. They have not only created a revolutionary underarm antiperspirant, a lotion loaded with sweat control, Carpe also has a full line of sweat care for everywhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Founded by two guys who had sweaty palms their whole lives, Carpe was created with dermatologists and people actually diagnosed as excessive sweaters. So you know it works. Whether you want to avoid a sweaty brow, underarm stain, smelly feet, below the belt sweat, Carpe has a solution. They sure do. And they have a full no question asked money back guarantee for the first 60 days. Not 30 days, but 60 days. Find their full line at mycarpe.com. That's mycarpe.com, mycarpe.com. And for a limited time, use the code TECHTIME to save 15% on your first order. From now on, we will only sweat in the gym. Life can get sweaty, but Carpe keeps you dry. Visit them at mycarpe.com. Coming to you from the shores of the Pacific Northwest. Keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side. With leading edge topics, along with special guests, to navigate technology in a segmented, stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum, the show that makes you go, mm. Mm. Technology News of the Week, the show for the everyday common pers- person with insightful segments on subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media. I'm Nathan Mum, and welcome to our show as we live stream in studio Saturdays from 4 to 6 p.m. on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. And of course, from our home radio station, KKNW, 1150 a.m., if you're not listening or watching our show on Saturday afternoon, then you're catching a rebroadcast. So make sure to visit www.techtimeradio.com to keep up on all the latest information. So 
just to make sure that we understand that. That means if you're listening to us on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, not 4 to 6 p.m., and on Sunday, then you're catching a rebroadcast. Boy, I missed that last week. Yeah, I know. Didn't you miss that? You know, we didn't do that the first hour, so we got a little bit. This is the second hour, a little bit more, uh, what do you want to say, loosey-goosey, a little bit more fun, a little bit more relaxed. Tech Time Plus. That's right. This is Tech Tech Time Plus. Tech Time Plus. This is, of course, for all the people that are paying the additional $9 a month to (laughs) to continue (laughs) our show. That's right. Uh, Of course, Tech Time is a weekly two-hour technology show. You're catching the second hour, so if you'd like to go back and you didn't catch the first hour, absolutely make sure you visit techtimeradio.com to, of course, get the information that you missed. Our first hour was great, so you're going to want to check that out. We talked about some NASA stuff, some Russian missiles, and, of course, uh, our favorite company. Our buddy Zuckerberg. Yeah, Facebook and Metaverse, so make sure you check that out. Um, we are a two-hour technology show that gives you technology in a simple format without having to geek out and many different perspectives and highlighted information. If you'd like to join us and engage us, you can go to Twitch TV forward slash tech time today as our interactive stream is up. You can send us a chat by going to Twitter at hashtag tech time, or you can call us on the phone at 425-373-5527 or 188-298-KKNW. That's 188-298-5569 and be a part of the show. As we do each of our shows, now it's time to officially start the show. Now on today's show. I feel like we need to be eating a turkey leg or something when that comes on. Do you? Yeah. A turkey leg? Like, like a royal. Do-do-do-do. Yeah. You remember that place, Medieval Times? I do. I will. Oh, I love Medieval Times. You know what? Just a year ago, I was there with my 25 year old So he's like 24 then. 24 year old son, my underage drinking son at the time, 20 years old, and my wife. And we all went to Medieval Times. And it's a kid's show, right? It's awesome. So we were literally there. We had a little bit of alcohol in us, uh, mm-hmm. me and the oldest son. And we were just laughing you and pre-funk having- pre-funk yourself? Yeah, we did. We did pre-funk a little bit. So <laughs> then we get there and we had a great time. It was probably one of the best times I've had just kind of making fun of the funny little skits that they do and the jousting and the overemphasized story plot that they try to create in an hour and a half uh, dinner show. But it was a great time. And you eat with your hands. That was really cool too, right? You get some yep. potatoes, some chicken, and so and you, you trencher. Yeah, so you, you're saying that this sound reminds you of that horn when they start That's right. the, when the deal. Do, when you do the horn, you feel like I need to have a turkey leg. All right. Well, on today's show, we have Nick Espinoza joining us to talk about our security breaches, why are hospitals being hacked, and he's going to provide us a few tips to help us during the holiday break to make sure that we do not get compromised and protect us when we shop online and in person. And we have our Black Friday holiday tips for what to buy and what to avoid. Now, this is not a list of here's the top 10 or 15 things. This is actual strategies of what you should buy during Black Friday and what you shouldn't buy during Black Friday. So let me ask you a question now. Do you think you should buy a television during Black Friday sales? Well, I don't know. Okay, well, we're going to tell you about that a little bit later. We'll give you the answer. Is it a good idea to buy a Black Friday TV deal or not? All right, and then, of course... We always start out with our episode with letters. Nothing's better than this time of the year because everybody is sending out crazy spam emails regarding Black Friday deals, fake Black Friday deals, and, of course, all the other items that they want to to get you to click on links and cause you damage. And we call that, of course, our letters segment. And then finally, we have This Week in Technology, a great little segment. You love that new music that we, with our violin there for the old time deal. Oh, yeah, so, that, so, that so we're really going to be ready to go happy. with that. All right. Now, where can you get all your information? Of course, you can get it at techtimeradio.com. You can watch the streams, sign up for our newsletter, listen, and of course, watch archives. And you can find all the videos from Mr. Espinoza that has been on our show. You just go and click on his face. He's got a gazillion and a half links, and you can watch all of his old information and new information regarding uh, technology items for security. And again, of course, you can always call us 425-373-5527 and 188-298-KKNW to be a part of the show. Now, David, the most important part is we're going to start with our loaded question of the day brought to you by Elderberry Boost. Get your Elderberry Boost today at elderberry-boost.com. And we have a question for the panel, all three of us, a quick question of what is the strange food to serve at your Thanksgiving celebration? I think David should answer this one first. You want David to go first? David, you're up first. Actually, I just thought of one. I know I said one off there, but how about throwing this one in? Because okay, how about some calamari? 
Calamari. What did you say off the air? Because we talked about this off the air, too. What did you say? I said squid off the squid, air. Squid. Squid. That's, that's calamari that's, is. No, that's not quite the same as calamari. The squid <laughs> would be odd. I, I think squid is by far. <laughs> calamari, rich people probably would that's actually squid. have it. What is, is calamari squid? Yeah, calamari squid. <laughs> When I ate, I thought it was onion rings, but of it's, course I was a that's kid. That's because they fry it. Oh, that's because they fry it. I know, because my parents are never going to let me squid. down, ever. Never, never let that down, ever, ever, ever. <laughs> ever, ever. <laughs> it's fried squid. There you go. All right. <laughs> well, what, is your, what is yours? Uh, you know, I was going to say fish, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move it over to... It would be kind of weird to have Italian food on... Really? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving? Yeah. So, like, my, I, I think it would be weirder than here, that. Here, let me carve the lasagna. <laughs> Do you have any worse than that? Chinese food. Because that's like a Christmas. That's, that's a Christmas, on the Christmas that's story. A, yeah, I know. That's like a Christmas deal. So if instead of having your Christmas deal, because all the restaurants shut down, that's why people go and have Chinese food, because Chinese were normally... Uh, restaurants open during okay, Christmas. Okay, let's, let's not let's not walk down that path. <laughs> okay, but, but <laughs> wouldn't Chinese food be really would it be really odd? Do you know what my I son guess. wanted to you do? Know, you he know wanted what? I to do to, crab. See, that's awesome. That's see, that's what I thought too. So that wasn't as weird yeah, as I you thought. You know what I used to do for what's, Thanksgiving when I was younger? I always wanted a big greasy cheeseburger. Oh, okay. So I would always go to a local one of the local places that was open. Yeah. And have my Thanksgiving dinner. So you see so your AM PM, you're shoving your AM PM the hamburger back in there. No, I'd go. I'd go right. a, re- yeah. a regular fast food joint, not oh, okay. an AM PM. All right. AM PMs sometimes save the holidays for many people. All right. Now let's get our episode started <laughs> with informative emails that I've received during the week. This includes scam phishing emails and all out mistruths disguised as legitimate emails in a segment we call Letters. All right, our letter segment. I'm going to start out first. I received an email from iPhone 14.5 at uh, something, 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 plasticsurgery.com with a bunch of numbers at the end of That's it. That's awesome. Uh, congratulations. You have, ra- you have won a brand new iPhone 14. Hey, that's they're behind the curve on that one. <laughs> they're a little bit, or they're a little bit ahead. They're a little slow. So the iPhone 13 just released, but so far, I guess that I have won an iPhone 14. So I got the prototype version. If I click here right now to get something that doesn't even officially exist, I was so tempted to see. Wow, how could they have the iPhone you didn't click 14? That I did not click on the link, and I just said that, that made my day. All right, you're up next. I like this one, which is from James Sandy 14 VQ blah blah Google Groups dot com on behalf of on behalf of somebody on behalf of capital A dot little M dot little A dot little Z capital <laughs> zero dot N and then like some little emoji emoji. Okay, all right. From tracking number from Amazon. From Amazon. Oh no, dear user. Unfortunately, uh-huh. we will we were not able to deliver your postal package in what? time because your address is not correct. Our address isn't correct. Please reply us, not to us. Reply us. Please, please reply us with the correct shipping address here. Okay. Did you? Uh, did I actually you? did. I actually did click on it because I have a. You, you know, my address is a little bit. Yeah, unique, you're you're right? hard to find. It you're, is because Google we, Maps has no clue where you live. So we were a part of unincorporated Snohomish County. Then all of a sudden we became a part of the town of Snohomish. Yep. Right? And what happens is our neighbors that are actually closer to the town of Snohomish are still on a, unincorporated, but we're in it. So uh, well, we Yeah, get, I know. We were talking about that the other day. We're trying you, out our suits. Yeah, we, we, where do we <laughs> ship your tux to? Yeah. And we were you were saying that they they it was the northeast part. Yep. The it, northeast part doesn't so, exist, but so, it sometimes exists. So it's on there sometimes, and it's not. So on I told there. him, "Don't put the northeast on there." And he's like, "Ah, oh, yeah, I can't it ship it to it you. Doesn't work." So I said, "Okay, put the northeast on it. So it's not even there." But I did receive my tux at home, so it did get there. Yeah, so. I got mine too. Oh, did you? Did you put it on? Uh, no, no. Uh, okay, I, I put mine on already, and so I got to get a little bit of a larger jacket. All right, here's my next one. Um, from James Sandy forty one VTQ dash H two dash blah blah blah. Hey, that's the same groups. guy. Is it the same guy, James yeah. 
Sandy 41? Yeah. Is it the V-Q-U-T? same? VQUT? VQUT dash, uh, dash 2 dash 1810? That is correct. <laughs> At googlegroups.com Boy, on the app. James, what a coincidence. Uh, that's, that's Where, a, where's he writing from? Oh, so he's so he's telling me this message is from a trusted source. Did you get that the, at the top of yours? No. Oh, I, well, mine did. So I, I, I was like, wow. It's the Anti Spam Association. Is 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 males is males becoming impossibles? <laughs> is males becoming impossibles? Are you that's, sure you're reading that? Correctly? That's what I am. To you get work done. You, didn't it? That's right. When you <laughs> constantly, when you constantly bombarded with garbage. <laughs> All our base are belong to us. <laughs> you, you give us chance to n- no longer respond here. Join the clause. Join the cause. Click J- here. I think James had a stroke between that that email and this one. <laughs> so it was Anti Spam Association at Gulf Street, Round Lake, Illinois. I just want to go visit that. I'm sure that that <laughs> list exists. All right, that's really you're awesome. up next. All right, do we have time for two or what? Because uh, I, I got this one here. Yeah, I think you got. I think you got. Try to do two quick or one longer. I'm going to do the long one. Which okay, is, which is. Really funny. Is that the one with the it, name that's a different name? It's it, not even the, my yeah, name? Well, yeah. yeah. Okay, from, yeah, do that one. That's funny. Kroll at verzx.com. Paid research interview for video game technology and solutions. Hello, somebody in Chinese characters. <laughs> no, they can't even get my name right. And the, so, so their and script the font, is wrong. And and the yeah, and the font is like uh, dot matrix. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really – it's uh, actually like really – Poorly. Is that Arial? Uh, no, it's not no, Arial. No. It's, it's, it's it, it was whatever their proprietary font was for that. That, that it's really bad. It font. is very bad. It, it's like the worst font you could choose to. It, to it's send almost it's almost like a terminal font. Is yeah, what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's almost like uh, uh, Comic Sans. Okay, <laughs> you don't like Comic Sans. That haven't you heard about? The, yes, there's a lot the of controversy. People, yes, a lot of Comic people Sans. hate. They hate it. Yes. Uh, our client would like to speak with IT leaders in the video game industry on the virtual desktop infrastructure, or VDI, and desktop as a service, or DAAS market. They are seeking to understand how companies are currently using VDI or DAS solutions. Is that DAS or DOS? I don't know. And identify reasons for not utilizing them for non-users. An incentive of $150 via gift card, PayPal, or similar will be paid to each participant for a 30-minute web interview. Referral, referrals are highly appreciated. If open to participating, please provide a brief answer to the screener below. Please provide a brief description of your current role at your company. Can you describe your organization in a little more detail? To what extent does your organization implement remote hybrid working? As okay, so I'm getting bored now. I'm getting bored. Oh, now. Are you bored? Uh, I'm bored bored now. Yes. So essentially, it's like three pages. Yeah, it's huge. And, and, and then they want you to click on the link at the very end. Did you click on the link? I did click on the link. What happened? And it said, I want a brand new iPhone 13. <laughs> and not a 14, oh, but a 13. I, I would, it was flashing I, I, all over I everywhere. I think I would go with the 14. So, But they wanted me to do a survey, so I don't know why they were going to let me win an iPhone 13. But I got so excited that I decided to put in my email address and my social security number that they asked for so I could win that, so I can make sure that I have a chance to win. Yeah, I'm sure you did that. So <laughs> everybody knows you don't do what Nathan does. You don't click on these don't links. Don't click on the links. Because this, this, other than the... <laughs> the the name Crazy being font messed up and the name being and, bad. Um, this is actually looks very legitimate. It does. I think maybe they're even trying, ha- look at the back. It even I has think, a disclaimer. Yeah, I think they're trying to bore bore you into doing it. Like is that, I just did. Is that maybe a new tactic that maybe. you just make it so bad that you're going to click on it to get through it? Well, you know, what's the psychology? It's so, in that? It's so long that people are just going to start skimming it. Okay, right. So. When you skim things, you you lose you can lose context, context and everything like that. So, I think I think if you, I don't know that anybody planned this out, but yeah. if you if you kind of look at it through that lens, you can you can see why people would might be encouraged to click the link like you did. Well, so <laughs> let me end you an an real quickly. iPad, I, I, iPad prod. <laughs> Uh, iPad, uh, uh, no, the 13, iPhone, iPhone, iPhone 13. Yes. Whatever. All right. So this is, of course, may the peace and love of Allah, God, be with you. Help a refugee widow. My name is blah, 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 blah. Please send me a sum of uh, $4,000 to help litigate against the $10.5 million my late husband deposited into a foreign bank account. Uh, sure I, it's not the Prince of Nairobi No, or it's whatever? not. They changed it. They changed it. 
Please write me so that I can give you more details about myself and the money. Don't respond to anything. Anybody that says you have to pay money to receive money and wants you to send it to them, please understand there's nobody out there that has $10.5 million by a late husband and doesn't have at least 16 lawyers that will take care of it for them. If you know, there's that much money here's available, a, here's you the aren't going to have to worry that they're going to randomly reach out to you to help them get that money. Yeah, here's the thing. You know, yeah. you, you remember late night infomercials? I do. I they, sometimes watch them. They still play them, right? I, I do. QVC. Woo-hoo. Yeah, you know why they keep playing them? Yeah. Because I think, I think, the first thing I think is, why are these p- stupid people on here doing this? Oh, there still are. That's because people fall for it. They do. It's the same thing with that thing. I, I saw it was the last QVC thing. It was like something for 19 bucks. And it was like you have seven payments of a dollar sixty two. What the heck? Really? If I can't if I can't pay the nineteen dollars, that's some serious, serious financing what, there. What am I doing? Seven payments of a dollar, almost a, two bucks a pop. That's the same thing with that with that e- email. That's right. It's the same email. It's just recycled, and people still fall for it. All right. right. Well, you know what? You can always be a caller on our show. And if you have an idea, make sure you visit our website and go and click on the very top to be a caller. And provide us feedback on segments. We've had people submit information on scams that have happened to them. And if, if you have a great scam, we would love to send it to us. Send it to press at techtimeradio.com. And Melinda will forward it to us and we can read it on the air. Well, when we turn. Don't get me started about my email. I f- hate my email. Oh, oh yeah. I that's right. About that. Okay. Up next, we have Protect Yourself Today, where we explore what's going on in the world of cyber breaches, technology scams, and the use of technology for criminal purposes. With our guest, Nick Espinoza, the CIO of Security Fanatics. You're listening to the show that makes you go, hmm. We're going to be right back after these commercials. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, have you heard of Dice Throne? Yeah, I've heard of that. I hear it's pretty cool. It's Yahtzee meets Magic, the Gathering. Dice Throne can be played as a one versus one dueling game. Dice Throne has a great announcement that they have coming to Kickstarter regarding a game that is based on Marvel characters. The Marvel Dice Throne is a fast and fun board game for all ages. Each player selects one to eight heroes to face off in a head-to-head battle to see who earns the right to take the throne. Now, who would be your hero that you'd want to be? Black Panther. You like Black Panther? That's right. Uh, Mine is Loki, because Loki never stabs anybody in the back. Not ever. All right, well, the gameplay involves strategically rolling dice to activate special abilities, playing unique hero cards to manipulate results, and upgrading your hero board to power up your stats. This is currently being crowdfunded on Kickstarter. Go there now and reserve your copy. Tech Time listeners, you're in luck as we have a direct link to get you access to the Kickstarter for the Marvel Dice Throne game. That's correct. If you go to tinyurl.com forward slash Tech Time Dice Throne, again, that's tinyurl.com forward slash Tech Time Dice Throne, or you can just click on our sponsor page at techtimeradio.com to get the direct link there to sign up for the Kickstarter. You do not want to miss out on this opportunity. Mike, have you backed the Kickstarter campaign yet? I did it yesterday. All right, I'm going to do it tonight. Make sure to use the tinyurl.com forward slash throne, or to make it simple, go to techtimeradio.com and click on our sponsor link. All right. Welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. We got Mike Renee here and David Brown and... The studio behind the board keeping us straight. And, of course, we're getting ready to have our security expert, Nick Espinoza, join us on the show. Let's get ready to start our next segment. Protect yourself today. All right. We're always happy to have our security expert, Nick Espinoza, back on the show. And we have a few things that we are going to talk about today. Nick, thank you so you much, so much for, joining for joining us. us. Oh, As echo. always, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Uh oh, hey guys! We got a little, got bit, a little of bit of an echo, echo here. here. Hang, Hang on. on, you got that you got taken that care, care of, David? David. Uh oh, David. David's, David's, David's running, running, back, running back, here. back here. Hang on, Hang on, on a, second. a second. All right. Uh, he told us to talk. Okay, so there we, we go. We're gonna talk. Well, welcome back, David. <laughs> so there we go. Okay, we're, we're gonna be talking about <laughs> a couple things when it comes on up. Uh, yeah, you, you the stapler know, almost hit you in the head. The stapler did <laughs> almost hit me in the head. We, we want to make sure that the audio is correct because if we have double audio, that doesn't sound good on the, well, the radio I station. I, I don't know if it's just us hearing it or everybody hearing it. That would be. I think it'd probably be everybody because I think yeah. we're hearing the streams that, that come on out, or at least the broadcast. Either that, or the, the either that, or the whiskey from last hour just kicked in. Is that what it was? Maybe. Yeah. So, how do you celebrate uh, Thanksgiving? No, just okay. 
Let's see, if Mr. Brown, are you ready? Or are we going to go on to the next area? He, he says he, he says thinks we're ready to go. All good? All right. All right. I think we I are think good. We are good. Yeah, no, yeah no. you can hear me? We can hear we you. Can, can you hear, hear us, Nick? Hear us, Nick? Yes, yeah. Okay. okay. All good. All right. All right. Uh, uh, what, what's what, David saying? saying? David's saying, David's saying turn, turn off the speaker. Off the speaker. Are, do you have your, do you have your speaker, speaker on? on? Who, me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it shouldn't be picking up like this, but I can, if I turn my speakers off, I can't hear you. Do you want to turn them down, down a little, little bit? bit? You know sign language? Cause I don't, I don't No, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. I so, but no, my speakers low, are on low. very low, so it shouldn't, it shouldn't be affecting anything. Okay. Okay. Well, you well, know, some, something, something is giving, is giving us, us, a us a feedback. feedback it is. It is. Let's see. Is that better? Okay. You know what? You know what? Better? We're, we're going to ask you a question first off. First off. Tell us about, Tell us the, about security the security breaches, breaches that are going, that are going on, on with hospitals. hospitals. Should I? Un okay. All right. Perfect, so perfect. can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. We, yeah, we, we hear you just, right. just fine. Cool. Okay. So personally, I blame the Anti-Spam Association in Round Lake Beach, Illinois for this mess. That's I'm just saying that right now. Okay. Okay. Right out of the gate. So <laughs> speaking of which, it's like 30 minutes from my house, by the way. I should go say hi. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, we have a huge problem with with hospitals and medical facilities right now, uh, you know, just being hit. In fact, if you didn't know, interestingly enough, uh, and unfortunately, about a month and a half ago or so, we actually have our first what we believe confirmed fatality um, due to a hospital going down because of a ransomware attack. And, and I, think I think that's, that's really, really an interesting, interesting place to start this here because our, a lawsuit that was recently filed is alleging that a 2019 ransomware attack on Mobile, Alabama, Spring Hill Medical Center actually resulted in the death of a baby. Now, essentially what happened was the facility was hit due to a ransomware attack, patient records, et cetera, were essentially inaccessible. And this baby was delivered right in the middle of this ransomware attack as they were trying to essentially unscrew the hospital from this attack and at birth the baby suffered severe brain damage because its umbilical cord was wrapped around her neck and they couldn't use essentially the equipment uh you know to 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 help her she died nine months later of this and so this lawsuit is alleging that because of the ransomware attack the hospital inadequately was able to provide care and so that is essentially i think the backdrop for you know what what is been a huge problem for years at this point but is continuing to, to escalate and when we're talking about this as you know i do like a breaches of the week video every sunday like a video on a podcast and so i went back through my notes for about the last month or so and i've done a, like a zillion different breaches in the last month but 18 of those were actually medical facilities and so this is just a beyond uh you know serious issue the one i know that you were mentioning Earlier, Nathan, was the Southern Ohio Medical Center. Uh, you know, they had an apparent ransomware attack, but they haven't confirmed. But, you know, when I was pulling these breaches and I, you know, I just I just compiled a few. I mean, Utah Imaging Associates for 583,000 patients due to ransomware, a nonprofit in California getting hit for over 650,000 patient records and on and on and on. This is a huge problem that we have. There are no honor among thieves. And what was interesting is in the middle of the pandemic, or I should say near the beginning of the pandemic, a lot of ransomware gangs came out and said, well, we're not going to hit medical facilities because it's critical infrastructure in the middle of a pandemic, you know, so there's going to be some honor among thieves, but the entire supply chain for the hospital systems were wide open for attack. So, you know, what about the trucking company that moves the ventilators? They get hit. What about the manufacturer of the ventilators or the PPE? They can get hit because they're not a hospital. And so we have to understand that as we are looking at securing our medical facilities there's a massive amount of supply chain that a hospital requires you know everything from garments you know that the nurses and the doctors have to wear the medical equipment to tongue depressors to syringes not to mention medical waste that needs to be hauled away so it doesn't pile up i mean this is a huge huge problem here and on top of this we also have a changing face of what we're understanding is actually medical meaning it's going above and beyond just the hospitals and our local doctor we're now looking at health tech becoming part of that medical umbrella that really needs security so it is just a mess out there right now and we are seeing hospitals get hit with a good amount of frequency yeah we are hey that's better yeah all right so let me ask you the next question we got the holidays coming on up right what is something 
that we need to make sure that we we just talked about our letter segment, right? And we just had everybody's funny letters that they send to us trying to scam us. Uh, this is one of the busiest times when you have a holiday break because people can send out spam emails. They're reading for Black Friday events that are happening. What are one to two or maybe even three? Let's do three. Three items that we should be on the lookout for and, and can help us during these Black Friday frenzies of emails that we're going to receive in our email inbox. Right, right. Well, I mean, first things first is, you know, have a very skeptical eye at anything that you're getting. You know, if you're getting something from Best Buy or Walmart or, you know, take your massive retailer out there that says, oh, Black Friday sale, 8,000% off everything. That includes Amazon as well, you know, and online. If they're actually running that sale, don't click on any links in the email. Just go to the website, go to amazon.com, Best Buy, Walmart, wherever that is, and, and, and make sure that that's actually legitimate. There are so many scams that get run in the holiday season because everybody's buying stuff for their loved ones for you know whatever they, whatever they celebrate. And so that is really important. It kind of dovetails with the entire standard for education that everybody really needs to achieve. I mean, we have herd immunity or we're trying to get herd immunity in the pandemic. We need herd immunity in cybersecurity in terms of education. The more you know, the less susceptible you are to getting hit, which means if you're less susceptible to getting hit and compromised, then everybody in your address book, everybody in your friend list is less susceptible to getting compromised as well, because now suddenly you are not phishing them, or rather a hacker uh, that looks like you is not phishing them through your account. So that I think is probably my first tip here is look at this at a skeptical eye. And everybody's looking for that, you know, like 80% off that flat screen TV or whatever that is. And so if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Go to the website yourself, type it in, in the same way that if you got an email from your bank saying you need to change your password, go to your bank's website. Don't actually click links. My mother sends me emails. I don't click the links. I don't open the attachments without vetting them first. It's very important because anybody can get compromised if you don't have good security controls in your life. So that I think is super, super important. Uh, you know, also on top of that, what you can get is actually a web filter for your computer or your device. It's an agent that sits there and will actually essentially look at the websites that you're trying to get to and check them for threat. So in other words, let's say you're going to that fake website, uh, the web filter identifies, hey, wait a second, this isn't actually like Walmart or whatever, this is malicious. Now it will block you from going there. And if you can't get there, you can't give away your information. If you can't get there, you can't get infected. So, so those are just like one or two quick things uh, on top of many other things you need to do in your life, especially if we're looking directly at those emails that we're all going to get, you know, in the next couple of weeks for, for Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Voodoo Day, you know, whatever you celebrate. So, so uh, what is the best web filter to load on your machine? I've seen a bunch of spam web filters. Some of these are are fakes where they'll actually come on up and, and take over your browser or your search page so you can do that. What would be a very good web browser that you could find online, whether it's free or, or not free, to load on your PC right now? Yeah, well, so a couple of these that, that are pretty well-known players, and I'll stick to the bigger ones, is uh, Quad9. Quad9 is a, is a player. Uh, they are very good at threat detection. They ingest block lists and indicators of compromise from a lot of different places. So they're a major player in this uh, space. Um, Cisco Umbrella has been a major player. I know they've got some fairly inexpensive options too. It's like 40, 50 bucks a year or something like that, um, you know, for a web filter. And to your point, yeah, I mean, it's if it's free to you, odds are you're the product, <laughs> you know? Um, you know, so anybody can use the you know, the free settings, if you're technical, uh, te you know, if you if you're techni technical savvy enough, tech savvy enough, uh, you know, to edit your own DNS, you can pop, pop in like quad nines DNS address, but I'm, I'm not expecting most people to know how to do that. And the agents basically take care of that. And then you can set controls as well. So if you have, let's say kids in the house, and you don't want them going to sites, they shouldn't be going to as kids, uh, you know, oftentimes you can set these controls and policies in the web browsers, or excuse me, the filter, so that it just will not allow them to get where they want to go, or where they shouldn't be going in that sense. So I would look at those two also safe browsing is another one or safe internet browsing um, has really good reviews as well, especially it's more family friendly uh, and all of that. But quad nine and Cisco umbrella tend to be the two big players right now in that space. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Nick. Are you, are you guys hearing me? 
Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay, perfect. I, I wasn't here myself, so I'm sorry, <laughs> Nick. Thank you so much. Now I know web filters are big hits. I used to have one when my sons were growing on up, and we used to bo- block Barney and a bunch of other stuff that my kid, <laughs> my, my oldest, would go to. He just loved Barney itself. Uh, but Nick, if you could tell us information about where we can learn more about you, uh, let us know wh- where do we find you out. I, I can find you on Twitter, but where else can we find more information about you? Yeah, so Twitter at Nick A E S P, uh, LinkedIn slash Nick Espinoza. That's pretty much my entire business bio <laughs> right there. Feel free to connect to me. Uh, Facebook is slash Nick Espinoza as well. YouTube slash Nick Espinoza. Uh, you know, so I do daily videos and podcasts and all that. And you know, I'd, I'd love to hang out. Please connect. That's right. His Twitter is the best. If you go, to his I, so I Nick, I I love your Twitter. I'll just tell you, I look forward to your little jokes and and he puts these little. He's the only person that I understand his memes for. So my wife shows me memes all over. Her. I don't get any of them, but with little Nick's little stuff out there, I get it all the time. So yeah, I do. You, so. Is that because of your nerd quotient? I, you know what? I don't. Nick's uh, Nick's memes are much better. That's what I'd say. All right. Oh, thank okay. you very much, Nick, for being a part of the show. We'll see you next week or the week after because we love having Nick be a part of our show. Now, when we go on our, our commercial break, I want you to go grab a pen and pencil to take notes because the next segment we're going to be coming up. We're going to be talking about Black Friday technology hints, not products, but I'm going to tell you information and not deals. I'm going to tell you information about Black Friday shopping that if you take notes on specifically for technology items, you will be safe during the Black Friday sales of not getting crap that will not be usable for you a month or two later after the time. So you actually want to be uh, ready to listen and take notes for that. Of course, I am Nathan Mum. We got Micro Day here, David Brown behind the board, and we're going to see you after our commercial break. Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code TECHTIME. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Hi, this is Lisa Downs, host of Reigniting You, a new show here on KKNW that explores a variety of topics and timely issues for making mid to late career transitions. I'll be here every Wednesday afternoon at 3 o'clock bringing you guest interviews, career transition advice, and great stories to guide you to what's next in your career and life. Gain a renewed sense of purpose for your next phase with a positive, forward-looking approach. Get ready to be re-energized, recharged, and reignited Wednesdays at 3 o'clock. All right, welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Mo. We've gone through over 90 minutes of technology, and we have just about 20 minutes left. Now, we're really excited to get our next segment. This, I guarantee you, Mr. Gorday, you're going to learn something that you never knew about in this segment. Truly. I, I absolutely. If promise. you do, I promise. If you do not, then I will buy you an additional meal out this week. If you don't learn something new, <laughs> okay. I guarantee you that. Or maybe I'll give you a, a little bit of that whiskey that we had, an extra bottle of that. Yeah, right? if you have an extra bottle of that. I'll okay, so we're going to now get ready to start our next segment now. Let's look at the top holiday deals for the season with the Tech Time wish list. What the heck? <laughs> well, that was, that's, our, that's our technology wish list. So these are now. Well, hey, we had the audio guy come back in, and we did was a bunch of things. The, was he playing his guitar, or so, was that was that some sound bites? That, that was some found? sound bites on top of his. Because he type plays, of he does play guitar, right? Yeah. So our, our our guy is very musically talented that does our voiceovers, and so um, no, this was just him talking, and I had some stuff that yeah, was going there. All right, but let's talk about Black Friday tech deals, tips to avoid. Items and to buy items. The holidays are coming, and that means you're probably hoping to score a deal on the hottest gadgets, either for gifts to the loved ones or, let's face it, for yourself. But contrary to what some (laughs) retailers and manufacturers may think, you should avoid buying certain technology items during the Black Friday sales. What's more, waiting until Black Friday deals are over can actually be an advantage when it comes to shopping for the hottest items. Mm -hmm. Stay ahead of the market 
Items will surely run out this year with supply chain issues on technology and chip shortages. We've talked about these throughout the whole year itself. So there are limitations to the electronics and the chip manufacturers worldwide. Yep. We have problems with shipping containers bringing in new products. Yep. We have problems with actual inventory controls. And so if you are looking to get some of these great electronics, do not wait. If you see something that you want, and we're going to talk specifically uh, maybe about like a, a new console. Let's say you want a brand new video game. You want the PlayStation 5. Do you realize the PlayStation 5 released last year mm-hmm. and it's still very difficult to get today? The same with the Xbox Series X. Um, I have one at is home. It's still hard to get? It's still very hard to get. And the reason it's hard to get is because there's manufacturers with the chips that are inside that that they are not able to mass produce and be able to flood the market. So if you see... Are you sure that's that's the only reason why? Uh, Well, it's also because scalpers buy them all the time, and we'll talk a little bit about that in our, and, in our deal here. Yeah, and then they artificially... Uh, raise the prices. They are, no, and they artificially keep the keep the demand high by short shorting. They the, do that the is a, some strategies also. But what happens is normally after a year, a console's been out. Specifically, th- then you want to flood the market, right? That, Nintendo's right. really good with that. You, yep. You're kind of scarce at first, and everybody talks about it. Everybody wants to get in, pay premiums. But after a year, you should have it. But not this year because chip shortages are happening. Being all across the area. You need to make sure you stay ahead of the market. You need to make sure you go in and actually physically visit stores. Because, you know, stores, instead of always posting things online, they'll have a console here. They'll have some electronics sitting on the shore, the shelf in the store itself and not actually advertising online. Most companies, large box stores, let's take Walmart, Target, any of these, they have normally two distribution center lines. One is the online marketplace that they have with all the online electronics and items that are available. And then they have the physical store product line that comes in in a different channel. So what happens is when a product comes on in, it's being split into two. Half of it's being normally put online and the other half is normally going to the stores itself. So if you want to get electronic deals, you go and buy them now. You don't buy them on Black Friday. You don't buy them after Black Friday deals. You go out and buy them the week ahead of time so you can make sure you have them already taken care of. What if I want the the awesome deal. Let's talk about that. TVs. Okay. Oh, TVs are on sale, right? Let's talk about this. TVs are always on sales. They're always discounted. Should I buy a Black Friday deal? Absolutely not. That is the worst time to buy a television. Why? And we're going to talk about that because the best time is right before the Super Bowl in February of the following year because there's this big show that comes out in January called this Consumer Electronic Show, CES. We always cover them here as a technology company. Mm -hmm. And each one of the providers provide brand new items in that electronic show. So what happens is they'll come out with their brand new televisions. And all of those old televisions, after their their announcements of what's available, are going on sale. The time to buy a television is not on Black Friday, not to Christmas. Wait till the beginning of the year. Save that hard-earned cash and buy them in February. That yeah. first week of February, there's only 28 <laughs> days in the month. Sales are tough, and that's when video only and all these places are going crazy deals you're, you're and giving totally, you new stuff. Up. You're you're totally scratching the grain of the social structure, man. Why is that? Because okay, you haven't learned. I, I don't know if you've learned anything yet, but you're going to learn it next. All right, let's talk about computers. All right. Super cheap computers are a waste. And we're going to talk about most of the computers you're going to see on sale during Black Friday are what they call a line two computer processing board inside of that. So let's talk about that. Do they advertise that as a line Oh, two? no. This is something that you learn as a technology insider note and as a part mm. of being on Tech Time Radio. Normally, most computer companies have three lines of electronics. So they'll have the consumer line, which is normally a line two. Mm -hmm. They'll have the discount line, which is sometimes a line three. Mm -hmm. And then they have the business and the high-end line, which is a line, line, which is line one. Now let's talk about electronics. When electronics come off the floor and to be put into computers, a line one circuitry board means that it comes perfect with no flaws and it was tested out and works with no issues. Those get put normally into the business machines. You don't have to worry about it. If your circuit board comes off the line and it has an issue, it goes back. 
And what happens is they may take a little shortcut and they may do a re-thread of a, a lead from one side to the other. They may put additional circuitry boards on it. They may re-manually uh, touch up the circuit board itself. Mm-hmm. And what happens is that means that it's not working completely off of line one and they've made alterizations to it. And that becomes a consumer product as a line two. It still gets tested and says that it works, but the chances of that failing on a line two are much greater than a line one product that comes on out normally perfect without any issues. Really? Yes. Now we go to line three. Line three is the discounts. If you want to buy the cheap TV sometimes, if you want to buy the cheap computers, line three electronics means that they have gone through the first line and they failed. They went through the second line and And they they still had problems and they had to add either additional circuitry, additional boards, or new software or new firmware or something to alter the original condition of that manufactured board to make it work. And that becomes your Black Friday specials. Guaranteed to last six to eight months until that lead goes off or until something goes wrong in the firmware or that additional chipset that they had to re-solder back on no longer works. Yeah, here this that's why we're here. To, now did you know to that bust, about to, to bust your Black Friday bubbles? That's right. So don't be buying those cheap machines on Black Friday deal because they are level two guaranteed. That's why and we sometimes drink level on the three. Show. That's right. <laughs> well, I don't know that that's why we do it. If you're buying a PC, do not buy anything less than an Intel i5 and 8 gigabytes of RAM if you want it to work on the standard operating system programs okay, that are available. So, so how do I tell if it's an a line one, line two, or line three uh, you don't. processor? See, you don't. No one advertises that. So uh, that is how do you, a known technology uh, secret. That's you, why you, you buy business product because everybody on the business side of Dell business side of Asus, business side of the deal, want their business computers to be the best that they can, so they always use line one products. So if I want a, if I want a new computer, then I should go buy a business computer. Yes, absolutely. If well, you have the opportunity between a business and a consumer-based product, you should always buy, the, and it's normally another $200 more. What about gaming computers? Well, gaming like, computers are very interesting because if you buy, let's say, an Alienware, yeah. Or if you buy, uh, again, Asus makes a gaming computer itself. Be very careful because sometimes in the description of it, they'll say L1 or L2. So if you look at the description of it, depending on the manufacturer, if it says it's an L2, it's not level two cash. Normally that means it comes out on the line two production line. So you know that that so has some problems. So that's what I'm talking about. There's, there's a little designation there in the description. Normally a little star. All those other little, little. And it'll just be an L and it'll say L1 or L2. Okay. That's the line that it comes in on. All right. There you go. You did not know that, did you? I did. No, oh, you did. Did, <laughs> I, did you know you did? No, I, was gonna say, I haven't talked about that yet. No, I want a bottle of this liquor, so oh. I'm going to lie. Okay. All right. <laughs> now, 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 let me tell you. Uh, last thing you want to do is be very careful for eBay. eBay is the scammers, uh, Ponzi schemes of scamming during the holidays. Are you, are you sure you got that all? Uh, the Ponzi scheme of you got you got it you got it conglomerated pretty good there. I, huh? I did. I it's so. Let me just tell you, if they say that they are selling an Xbox PS5 box, mm-hmm. right? Read the description and understand what you're getting because sometimes people will post a box of a PS5. And they'll put it up there for retail price. And they have now, a PS4 in it? No, no, no. It's just a or box. it's just a box. It's just a box. It happens all the time during the holidays. People will say, box of Halo this. Box of this. And if you look out of the description, it'll say it does not contain any contents in the box itself. And people go crazy after Black Friday to get That's the item that they missed. Yeah. And they will end up paying $399 for a PlayStation 5 box to be shipped with you with or without the styrofoam inside of it so that you can have a box available for your holidays. Yeah, that's 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 human nature at work there, buddy. And let me just tell you, eBay lists it as box. They say unopened. It's not the original content. They'll give you all of the warnings. And what happens is once you click on it and you buy that box, you're you getting a box, a box and you cannot get a refund for that. That sounds like the Toyota scandal several years ago. Do you remember that? I, I don't. What, what, what was that particularly? Uh, there was a, it was Hooters, I believe, was doing this giveaway and they said you'd win a Toyota. Yeah. And the, they did the contest and one of the women won the Toyota and they brought out a Toyota 
Oh, it was a toy? A toy Yoda. Oh, boy. Y-O-D-A. Yeah. And she sued them, oh. and they got in trouble. They got in trouble. You know, mm-hmm. be care- have you ever watched the Semi-Pro with Will Ferrell? Uh, nothing's better than they have this shot that they make, and Will Ferrell says, uh-oh, does anybody have the money to pay this person? And then later on during the movie, uh, Will Ferrell says, well, you won yourself a big check with a big lots of numbers on it. It's like, he's like, no, you can't deposit it. It's just the big check. So That's be right. careful what you buy. All right, well, we're going to take a break when we come on back. Of course, we have one more fact regarding uh, some gift cards that we'll get to, and then we're going to have, of course, our This Week in Technology, some very interesting information. So we'll see you after this commercial break. I'm Mr. Mum. We got Mr. Gorday there. I'm Nathan Mum. (laughs) Did you forget who you were just now? (laughs) Mr. Mum. I'm Mr. Mum. I'm Nathan Mum. We got Mike Gorday here and David Brown behind the board. See you after this commercial break. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's up? Hey, are you bored of TV? Like drugs but can't afford them? Or still paying alimony? Maybe. All right. Read How to See a Man About a Dog Collected Writing. It's surreal. It's strange. It's How to See a Man About a Dog. Get your dose of surreal prose and poetry with this dark comedy collection. Ebook available on Kindle Unlimited. Print copies are available on Amazon, the book depository, and more. That's right. I'm going to go get my ebook on Kindle Unlimited today. Hey, babe, I hear that you can download a new voice on Siri. No way. Yes, it's true. It's a voice that goes, hey, you big honk. What do you want to do and where do you want to go? Stop it. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. What has tech ever done for our relationships? Mm, we can't talk about that on the radio. If you want to eavesdrop on juicy conversations that no one is having around all things love, sex, and relationships, join us right here, 1 p.m. on KKNW and wherever you get your podcast. We look forward to seeing you in the Love Shack. How to See a Man About a Dog. It combines darkly comic short stories, powerful poems, and pulp fiction prose to create a heartbreaking and hilarious journey readers will not soon forget. Read How to See a Man About a Dog, Collected Writings, for free with Kindle Unlimited. Ebook available on Kindle, print copies available on Amazon, the book repository, and more. And now, let's look back at this week in technology. Oh, my God, that hurt. <laughs> All right. Welcome to This Week in Technology. This Week in Technology, we are talking about an item from November 17, 1970. A patent was originally issued for what is considered the very first computer mouse. Douglas Engelhart received the U.S. patent for 3541541 for his XY position indicator for a display system. That that was the original mouse name. That was the original mouse name. XY indicator. Yep. Uh, More commonly known as the computer mouse, uh, they called this device a mouse because the cord looked like a tail. Mm-hmm. The mouse was first prototyped in 1964, but it wasn't demoed until 1968 and was not included in a commercial computer until the Xerox 8010 Star Information System in 1981. They developed the computer mouse before we walked on the moon. That is correct. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Very interesting that it wasn't considered mainstream until this company called Apple had the first personal computer that was shipped with a mouse, which was called Lisa, in 1983. However, the mouse did become, of course, what it is today, and it is the most common input device in all computer and systems. it doesn't have a roller ball that you have to take out and clean. It doesn't. You remember the, you remember the roller balls? That's yeah. at Microsoft days. I, I had those two. <laughs> and it would get lint in it and all that, and yeah. then you'd have to you'd take have it to out. take it out and wash it. <laughs> you wash it. Did you actually put yours in your mouth and look at <laughs> That's it? That's what I just did. You, <laughs> you put it in your mouth, and then you got ready to go. <laughs> well, it's interesting to understand that the mouse is what essentially made inputting into the computer a standard process. Yeah. Microsoft followed. They had the Ergo mouse. There's been many different iterations since then. Nowadays, gamers have normally anywhere between 20 to 25 inputs built on a mouse mm-hmm. during their gaming itself. That's right. So do, you have, do you have that on your computer? I, I do have a one, two, three, four. I, say, I have a six input on the sides, yep. on the side panels. Yep. And the main. And the, the main, main two three. buttons, main three buttons, the scroll up and yep. scroll down. All right, last note to let everybody know for the holidays. If you want to buy a gift for someone that is special 
and you want to save money, there are these things called Game Passes, and there's a slew of them available from PlayStation to Xbox. Nothing's better than getting an Xbox Game Pass for as low as $14.99 per month that includes 100 games you can play, all from cloud gaming. So if you're looking for something and you can't get your electronics, go and buy a gift card, $14.99 per month. To give them to your nephew, give them to your kids so they can play games up to 100 games at a time without you ever having to put a disc inside a machine. Wow. There you go. Well, I'm Nathan Mum. Thank you for joining us on Hour 2 of Tech Time Radio. We got David Brown behind the board and Mr. Gorday. Thank you, as always, for joining our show. Yep. All right. We'll see you guys all next week. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that mmm moment in technology today. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. And also signing up on our YouTube page where you get to see us live in video. Yep, you can see us chat and have some fun. It's youtube.com slash Radio. All one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week.